Okay, this is gonna be the Algebra 2 uh, SOL Practice uh, 3, okay? Um, you're gonna get to use Desmos for this, okay? So have Desmos ready. So for this first one, what you should do is take out a negative. So what you have there is that's gonna be 2x squared. Let's see if I can shrink this down a little bit. No. <clears throat> 2x squared minus x minus 15, okay? Two times 15, negative 30, okay? The factors that would add up would be negative six and five. Okay, so from a box, it's 2x squared, okay? Uh, minus 6x plus 5x minus 15. That'd be 2x, 2x times x, 2x times negative 3, x times 5. So this top part would be negative, and you got 2x plus 5, x minus 3. This bottom part, you'd want to take out a negative as well. So that turns into d squared minus 9. Or, what well, we can just use d's. D, I guess they're using the letter D. Okay, so I got D plus three, D minus three. Okay, um, this one, uh, there's no, no GCF. I would do two times 15, which would be 30. The factors of 30 that would add up to that would be five and six. So I got two D squared uh, plus five D plus six D plus 15. That'd be two D, that'd be times D, D plus three, D plus five, okay? So with division, I've got keep, change to multiplication. I'm going to move this down because I'm going to run out of room. Okay, keep, change to multiplication, flip this. So that's 2D plus 5. Okay, um, D plus 3 all over um, 4D plus one. So what would happen? I could cross off this. I could cross off these. The negatives go away. So what I would have, okay, is 2D uh, squared, I think is right here, 2D plus five squared. And on the bottom, I would have 4D plus one. Okay, let's scroll down. Okay, this is problem number two. Okay, so uh, this is uh, x minus seven, x plus seven. So what's this side missing? The side's missing an x minus four. So I multiply by that top and bottom. This side is missing an x plus seven. So multiply by that top and bottom. So I distribute that, that's two x squared minus eight x, okay? All right, now, what I want to do is distribute that. That would be 3x plus 21. Since it's minus, that makes that negative 3x and negative 21. So I go, go to combine like terms. I've got 2x squared. These would combine to negative 11x. That would be a negative 21 all over um, uh, x minus 7, x plus 7, x minus 4. Now, what it looks like they did was they factored it. So two times that would be negative 42. Okay, factors of negative 42 that would add up to um, uh, negative 11 would be negative 14 and 3. So I guess that's what they decided to do. So that's 2x squared plus 3x minus 14x minus 21. So that would be 2x, x x minus seven, okay, x plus three, okay, all right. So I think that's just missing, um, I think the best answer would have to be this. They didn't include that other one. I don't know why that's not a choice. It's really strange, okay. Oh, two x, oh, that's what they did, sorry. 2x, so that, that top part would be 2x plus 3, x minus 7. Bottom would be, two, it would be x minus 7, x plus 7, x minus 4. So 
So that goes away. So sorry, that this would be the answer. The answer would be C. Okay. All right, let's go to the next page. All right. What would be equivalent here? Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to make this uh, negative 13 plus D, 42D cubed, divided by 13 minus D, 6D to the ninth. Okay. Now, uh, keep change flip. Uh, the thing is with this, I want to take out a negative 1, so that's D minus 13. I can also, over here, addition is commutative, so I can make that D minus 13. I got 42D cubed, 6D to the ninth. So this goes away. I got 6D to the ninth over negative 42D to the third. If I divide negative 6 and 42, I get negative 1 seventh, and then I would subtract those exponents as D to the sixth. Okay, so let's see which one I would end up selecting. I think I would select this bottom one, letter D. Okay, all right. Now this next one says, okay, identify the two expressions. All right, identify two expressions that are equivalent to this. Okay, now this means 72 to the 1 6th power, uh, Q to the 17 6th, and R to the 11 6th. Okay, so I can pretty much, okay, I can look at this and say, all right, these are not possibilities, okay? All right, so one of these, okay, all right, 72 or 729 to uh, 1 6. Let's see what that is. 729 exponent 1 divided by 6. It happens to be 3. So this is 3Q 17 6 R 11 6, okay? So that answer would be that because remember, it's always exponent divided by root, and my root here is 6. Now, if you broke this down further, all right, 17 divided by 6 is uh, 8 uh, and 5, 6, okay? So that's going to be 8Q, sorry, uh, that's going to be 2, okay, Q2 on the outside, and Q5 on the inside, okay? All right, R, 11 divided by six, that's another one and five, six. So that's one and five, six, that's two and five, six. So that's gonna be R1 and R5 on the inside. So the next possible answer is that, okay? Moving on to question number five, okay? All right, I got cubes, so I want to break that down. Okay, 576 divided by 2 is 2 and, uh, two and 288. That would be 2 and 144. That would be 2 and 72. 2 and 36. 2 and 18. 2 and 9. 3 and 3. Now, since I'm looking for cubes, I'm going to circle three items. Here, here. Okay, so I got two times two on the outside, three times three on the inside, so that's gonna be four cube root of nine. Now, if I'm being a good test taker, I know these are out. Then I wanna take eight for P, for N. Eight divided by, in this case, would be three, because that's the root, that'd be two, all right, with uh, two thirds, okay? So what does that mean? N to the two outside, N to the two on the inside. All right, P27, 27 divided by 3 is just 9. So it's just going to be P9, okay? So that's why this has to be my answer. Okay, exponent divided by root. Okay, all right, this is the factoring pattern. We've done this a bunch this year, okay? Factoring pattern, it's a minus, okay? This is always the opposite. That's always plus. So this is opposite, always, okay? All right, so I take the cube root of this, cube root of 125 is 5 and m, cube root of uh, 343, you just figure out what 7 times 7 times 7, is that 343? Yep, so that's 7, okay? All right, <clears throat> this term is this times this. If you're not good with multiplication, you can always divide. It's going to be 25m squared 
The middle term of these two multiplied, that's going to be 35m. 7 times what gives me that? Well, do 343 divided by 7 gives you 49. Okay? All right, so that's what you got. All right? Best answer, answer B. Okay? Answer B. All right? Let's, let's move on. Okay? All right? So it says drag these. So what I want to do with this is I split this into two problems. This and then I flip around the inequality and make that negative, okay? So this one I would add two. So x is greater than four. This one I would add two. So x is less than zero. So what I would want to select is an open circle on zero, shaded left, open circle on four, shaded this way. So you drag, you would drag like this one up and you would drag that one up. Okay, same deal, okay? Now, gotta be careful on this, okay? I would subtract one, so that's negative three, x minus two, less than negative six, divide by negative three. Now, when you divide by a negative, this flips around. So what you're left with is x minus two greater than two, okay? It's actually the same problem as above. Okay, all right. So I got x minus two greater than two, x minus two less than negative two. So it's the same concept. Okay, I would have this going this way. Okay, and then I'd have this going this way. The big thing is if you divide by negative, you have to flip that inequality around. I think this is problem number nine coming up. Okay, all right, once again, if you wanted to solve that, okay, what you would have is you have one eighth x minus one fourth equals one half, and then you would have one eighth x minus one fourth equals negative one half. Now you can use the Desmos to help you with the uh, adding of fractions if you want. You would have to add one fourth here and add one fourth here. If you want to do common denominators, that's three fourths. But if you needed to, one divided by two, okay, plus one fourth, all right, and that's going to be, okay, three fourths. So one eighth x equals three fourths. You would divide by one eighth. Once again, you can use Desmos or just keep change flip, it doesn't matter. Three divided by four, divided by one eighth. Okay, that's six for one answer. If I added a four, added a four, a one fourth, sorry. Negative one half plus a fourth would be a negative one fourth. Once again, if you need to, if you need to use this to help you do that. Okay, it's negative one fourth, and I'm gonna take negative one fourth and I'm going to divide by 1 eighth. That's negative 2. Okay? So I get those two answers. I got negative 2. That's a dot. 6 is a dot. Okay? There's no shading because it's an equals deal. Okay? This next question is a reflection of um, understanding conjugates. And remember, the only thing that changes is this middle term, this middle sign. Okay, so I would still have the negative 16, I'd still have that. So they're just testing you to see if you understand the concept of conjugates. Okay, question 12, I would subtract three, uh, six. Uh, whoops, that should be three. Divide by three, I got square root of two x minus four equals negative one. Now, before you square it, we got to understand that square root, all right, can't equal a negative number. So this is no solution, okay? And when that's going to be, this is an answer. If you square both sides, that'd be one, add the four over would be five. That'd be two and a half, okay? And that looks like that works out, okay? All right, but then if you go back and do the calculations, it doesn't. 
Remember, square roots, absolute value, they can't equal negative numbers, okay? All right, hopefully the next question is 12. Okay, what are the Y coordinates of the system? Now these system questions, I would type into decimals. X squared plus six X plus um, three Y plus six. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out here. Uh, let's say let's see equals zero. Maybe that will help us. It will. Boom. That's great. Okay. And then um, x plus y plus twenty equals zero. Okay. And we zoom out and we find where they they intersect. Now the question is is what are the y coordinates? The y coordinates are negative eleven and negative twenty six. So that would be this answer. Okay, so any of those systems, I would, I would just zoom out and find the intersection. All right, same thing with this one. What are the x coordinates here? So once again, I would put this into Desmos. 5x minus 4y minus 11 equals 0. Okay, and then uh, y equals x squared minus x minus 6. Okay, and then zoom in. Now this question asks for, what are the, identify the x coordinates. I got negative one and I got 3.25. So you would press that on those, okay? All right, uh, next one. Find the uh, summation value of this. Well, there's two ways to do that. You can do the S infinity, which is A1 over one minus R. Now I know the R, the R is two thirds. So one minus two thirds. The first term is if I would put one into there, okay? All right, well, two thirds to the one exponent one is just two thirds, okay? So two thirds, two divided by three, flip over, divided by parentheses one minus parentheses, two divided by three, click over there, close again, you get an answer of two, okay? All right, now let's see if there's a function in Desmos to help you with uh, summation. Yeah, you can select functions, scroll. If you select this, what you would type is one. Up here you could type like 100. And in here, you would just type two divided by three, click over X, and then just do, um, you know, use X instead of N. And then you would just do, up here, you just do uh, X. And it's the same thing. So use X instead of N, but that will get the job done. Okay. Identify which one of the families this belongs to. Okay. Now, what, I, what you could do is you could just graph these and then see what's similar, okay? Negative three divided by x squared, okay? That's pretty similar, okay? All right, identify each function. That, that looks similar. Now, if I do this other one, three divided by x, that doesn't look like it at all. All right, do the next one. Three divided by x plus one squared, that sort of looks like it too, so I would select that one, okay? And then this one is uh, negative three over x plus one, and that doesn't look anything like it, so I would not select that. So those would be the two I would select. Okay, all right. Which graph where c is less than zero? So what does that mean? C is a negative number. Let's make that a negative three. Well, if I go into this and graph that, okay, find log, all right, put X, put like a minus three, okay? All right, it shifts that graph down, okay? So if you can see this, okay, all right, it's obviously not this one. It's obviously not this one. It's really these two. This one is the better indication, so I would select graph D. Okay, because it's just that graph down.
okay? All right, 17, which one re best represents this? Once again, I mean, you can look at your asymptote being that, okay? And then this being here, okay? Now, uh, in the interest of time, I would just type in this first one, okay? Uh, eight divided by, or I, I think it's B actually. And you can see it crosses at negative 2.6, okay? And it has about that same asymptotes. So that would be what you would select. Okay, select all the following that basically um, happened here. Well, this reflected over the x-axis, so you would select that one, all right? <clears throat> you would look at, okay, all right? Normally, if I have x squared, all right, <clears throat> that I'm using 0, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2, so that's 0, uh, 1, 4, uh, 1, 4, okay? All right, so, all right, at 1, okay, so I move 1 over, or even if I move 2 over, okay, all right, well, what happened there, okay, all right? Well, first of all, I translated one unit up, okay, all right, okay, that, that definitely is in play. So what basically happened here, okay? If I did, um, I know it's not reflected over the y-axis because that would be like this, so that one's no good. Okay, horizontally compressed by a factor of, of 0.25. Okay, so what would that look like? Okay, so we know that it's a stretch, so this is what I would do. I know it's, uh, I know it's reflected, so I would make that negative. Okay, it's, if it was, uh, compressed horizontally uh, by that factor of 0.25. That would be 0.25x um, squared. Hold on. Okay, plus one. Okay, and if I, if I look at that, that's what I would get. Okay, all right. If it's horizontally stretched by two, it would be that, okay? Uh, if it was vertically stretched by 0.5, it would be that, okay? If it was vertically stretched by a factor of four, it would be that, okay? All right? Um, I think actually what they're considering No, vertically stretched by a factor of two. That's what they're considering a factor of two. So this is this is what we would have. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next question. Okay. The graph appears the uh, the domain. So what you would label? This is a great. I don't have the, the best of uh, situations here because I compress this too much. One, two, three, four, five. I think that's a negative five. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's negative six. This point here is two, negative eight. Okay. This point here is negative two, three. Okay. All right. Um, and so, uh, and since that's inclusive, all right, my domain is from negative five. Smallest x value, the biggest one would be two. So that would be what I'd have right there, okay? Hopefully you can see that better on your page, okay? Determine what value is not in the domain. So what I would do here is I would group the, I would move the x's over. So I get x, y plus y minus x uh, equals seven. I would move that x over. So I got x, y plus y equals x plus seven. I would take out the y, which would leave me with x plus 1. And then I would divide out the x plus 1. So my function is this, okay? I don't have any holes, but my vertical asymptote would be x equals negative 1. So that would be the value that would not, could not be in the domain, okay? All right? Now, 
This problem says identify the functions with the same range as this. So what's the idea? On this graph, I got absolute value, y equals the absolute value of x minus 4. Okay? So if you can see that, that's what my picture is. I got a, a, a negative 4, a 0, negative 4 there. Okay? That's a positive, positive. This is negative, positive. So my smallest y value is negative 4, biggest is infinity. So what I'm looking for is something that's similar to this, okay? Now, I can, like this one I know is out because when I use the asymptotes, that's a curved bracket. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put these rest of these in. x squared plus 2x minus three. Now, if I look at that, you ever see how it's the same picture? It's got the same point, except it's a curve. So this would be one of them x cubed minus 4. Now, that doesn't look like one of them. That goes on forever, so that's no good. Okay? Uh, square root of x with a negative 4 out here. Okay? Now, that's very similar. Okay? Because that's 0, negative 4. This would be infinity, infinity. Okay? Smallest y value would be negative 4. Biggest would be infinity, so that would be the same one. Okay, and then this one, x minus 4 squared, okay, that's going to be a y coordinate of 0, so I'm not going to use that. So those would be my two answers. Okay, drag so this is a continuous function. Okay, so what you would want to do is you would want to have no vertical asymptote. You would want to have no hole. Okay? So basically, you would want to have no solution. If I move that in there, this would create a vertical asymptote. So that's not going to be continuous. If I put that in there, that is also going to be, um, uh, well, this one right here, okay? Uh, if I put x in there, x squared over x, that hole would be, that would be a hole at zero. So that's not good, okay? This one would have a solution, but if I put in x squared minus 2x minus 4, okay? All right, that also would be no good because I would have uh, potential holes. If I put in this, this x plus 2 squared plus 13, that would not have any solutions. So that ends up working and that does not. Because what you're looking for is, remember, if you solve this, you should get a solution. Remember, solutions are where it crosses the x-axis. Okay, so that's a tough question. Okay?